Hello everybody, I'm Luc de Koning and I'm a researcher in environmental acoustics. I work more than 20 years at the Ghent University in Belgium. That involves calculating noise maps, evaluating and researching noise annoyance, organizing measurement campaigns and support policymakers and industry to reduce the impact of noise on the population. The current goals of the research is to gather a large set of noise measurements and use this in models to explain and predict the response of citizens to road traffic noise. Within the context of the Brightech project, I set up a pilot citizen science project to show how the trajectory of environmental evaluations is performed, evidently for the case of noise exposure and noise annoyance. I provided a tentative program for the teachers and let them free to decide how they would include the information in an educational plan. This way they can fit it in their available time and schedule. This freedom worked very well and I will walk you through that program in a glance. One action had to be performed at first contact of the pupils with the subject. The annoyance survey. The reason is obvious, the survey shouldn't be affected by the information they gather in the rest of the project. The pupils had to use a large set of skills to collect the required information. This would illustrate that everything they learn will become relevant in some context at a given time. Several teachers joined forces and applied the relevant sections in their specific classes. The tasks were split over the course uh, science and technology, mathematics and geography. I provided low-cost noise monitoring equipment to allow the pupils to measure the noise at their dwelling. They had to document their measurement location, retrieve the calculated noise levels from the available noise maps in the internet, on the internet. They performed traffic counts in front of their dwelling, retrieved the noise measurements in detail for that period of their traffic counts and retrieved hourly statistics for the full measurement period. The measurements took at least two days and one school measured a full week. After collecting all necessary data, the data analysis can start. So they calculated the noise exposure levels related to traffic counts at their dwelling to the measurements, compared the measurements with the governmental noise map. In the math course, they learned how to use the logarithmic function to calculate the long-term noise exposure indicator. They learned how statistical levels, percentiles, can be used to present the vast amount of data in a more efficient way. They present the dose response functions, so how do their own responses in the survey relate to the noise map results, the traffic counts and the noise measurements. The final answer is noise maps and traffic counts have their shortcomings. Noise measurements can fill in the knowledge gap. And they just collaborate to that process of gathering the necessary data for the scientists. They learned things, applied their skills on real life data and added value for in one single project. The whole program ends with a general discussion on how noise exposure can be reduced and how they as individuals can be part of this environmental goal. Teachers and pupils were very positive about this collaboration and this project has shown that schools might become the most efficient way to collect the required noise measurements. I hope this was interesting. Thank you for listening.